Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, the Perdana Global Peace Foundation continues their journey and the PGPF is seriously affected by events in Rakhine, Myanmar and believes that we must urgently put our minds together to help to find a solution to aid a people, the Rohingyas, described by the United Nations as the most persecuted, repressed ethnic minority group in the world. Assalamu alaikum and a very good morning to Yang Amat Berbahagia Tun Dr. Mahave Muhammad, the fourth Prime Minister of Malaysia and President of the Perdana Global Peace Foundation. Yang Amat Berbahagia Tun Dr. Siti Hasma Muhammad Ali, Advisor, Perdana Global Peace Foundation. Yang Berbahagia Tan Sri Norian Mai, Chairman, Perdana Global Peace Foundation. Esteemed speakers, moderators, Distinguished guests, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the International Conference on the Plight of the Rohingyas, Solutions. The Rohingyas are a forgotten people. No one wants them. The crisis of the Rohingyas is not widely reported because the cameras are not there to call the world's attention to the persecution of a people who have been living in Rakhine since the 8th century. Neither the atrocities have been highlighted, nor the tragedies and the injustices. The plight of the Rohingyas, as you have seen earlier in the videos and in the exhibition outside, include modern-day slavery through forced labor, confiscation of land, restriction from travel, most of all, the denial to the right of citizenship in their homeland. And it doesn't stop there. This conference today will try and endeavor to find the road to peacefully end their misery and give them back the life they deserve. And on behalf of the uh, Perdana Global Peace Foundation, we urge you to work with us as we hear from our distinguished experts here today. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my great privilege and honor to now invite young Amat Bahagia Thun Dr. Mahade Muhammad Malaysia's fourth Prime Minister and President of the Perdana Global Peace Foundation to deliver his keynote address. The Priscilla Gun. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And a very good morning to everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, members of the panel, speakers, guests, Rohingya guests, lady, all present this morning, I would like to explain in a few words what this conference is all about. We are not here to condemn anyone. We are here to find solutions to a problem which has been with us for a very long time. The problem arises basically from a refusal to recognize the people living in Rakhine state of Myanmar, the people who are Muslim by religion and who belong to an ethnic group that is different from the main population of Myanmar, who are mostly, who are actually uh, Buddhist. This group uh, basically are, are actually Muslims. And their problem is that the government of Myanmar refuses to acknowledge that they are citizens of Myanmar. 
I believe that this is general, is a general policy of Myanmar. Immediately upon independence, for example, Myanmar expelled all Indians who were doing business and trading in Myanmar. Well, that of course appeared to be its right. But I would like to find, point out that this is not a practice that is general for everyone, that uh, is something that is uh, the right of a government. Most governments would recognize the people living in their country as having rights to the citizenships of the country. If they are not yet citizens, then they will be, uh, <coughs> they will have access to citizenship of the country. Without trying to make Malaysia a kind of model for anyone, I would like to point out that we in Malaysia have the same problem. Upon independence, we had the same problem as Myanmar. This country is called, was called Tanah Melayu, which means Malay land. But during the British period, a lot of Chinese and Indians were brought in. These people came in initially, temporarily, and when there was this uh, great recession of, of uh, 1929, many of them went back to their own country, which means, of course, that they are transients. They are not uh, really uh, concerned about becoming citizens of this country. But a considerable number of them decided to stay in this country, to live in this country, to regard this country as their home. And so when we were struggling for independence, the indigenous people, the Malays of the Malay states, decided that we should accept these people as citizens of a bigger state for United States comprising the Malay states and the British colonies of Penang and Malacca. We accepted initially those who were given citizenship of the British-owned territories of Penang and Malacca. But what, later on, it was decided that all the Chinese and the Indians who regard this country as their home and want to stay here permanently, they should be given the right access to citizenship. But beyond that, we decided that according to the prim principles of Jus Soleil, we accepted some one million people who if we are go going to go by the conditions applied to those uh, wanting to become citizens of Malaysia, they would not qualify. But even though they were, did not qualify, we regarded them as eligible and some one million citizenship were given to the Chinese and the Indians. This was at a time when the population of Malaysia was only five million, and one million is about one-fifth of or 20 percent of the total population of the Malay states and the street settlement in, in the peninsula. So we accepted the need, we were willing to accept these people as citizens of this country, although they were here for only a very short time. For most of them, they've been here only for three generations or less. 
But in the case of the Rohingya, they were not there for three generations. The Rohingyas were in Myanmar or Burma, as it used to be called, for from the eighth century. And that means they have been there a very long time, or more than a thousand years by now. And yet they were denied citizenship. They were denied citizenship, although there are other ethnic groups in Myanmar who are citizens of Myanmar. It is grossly unfair that these people who have been there for such a long time are denied citizenship. And because of this denial of citizenship, the problem is created because uh, a lot of them have been persecuted by uh, government forces and also by the citizens of Myanmar who are not uh, who are not Muslims. Off and on, there would be uh, cases of unfair treatment, unjust treatment, of oppression of the Rohingyas. The Rohingyas did not ask for much. They merely asked to have a right to be citizens of the country. And surely people who have been living there from eight from the 8th century, have a right to become citizens of Myanmar. But for reasons which we cannot understand, the Myanmar government decided that these were not Myanmar people. They were not uh, entitled to citizenship of Myanmar. This is grossly wrong. If uh, other countries can accept foreigners as citizens. And we see many countries today where the indigenous people have accepted people who came later as citizens. We cannot see why the government of Myanmar should have a policy which excludes people who have been living in the country for more than a thousand years from being citizens of the country. Naturally, this leads to confrontations, clashes between the, the people who are citizens, mainly the uh, people of uh, Bu the Buddhist faith, and the Rohingyas who are Muslims. Of course, not all the Buddhists are against the Muslim, but majority of them and the government had passed a law to say that the Rohingyas are not citizens of Myanmar. A number of them, well, not a small number, thousands of them have been forced to leave the country. And many of them are to be found in Southeast Asia, including in Malaysia. We have tried in Malaysia to return these people to Myanmar only to be told that these are not Myanmar citizens and therefore they are not entitled to be sent back to, the, to Myanmar. This creates a problem, of course, because now these people become stateless. Nobody stands up for them. They are, as, they are almost as if they don't exist. But they exist, physically they exist, and they are living in Malaysia, Thailand, and a few other countries. And they have a right to go back to Myanmar. But the government of Myanmar has consistently refused to accept them. And this creates a flawed problem, not just for the Rohingyas, but also for the countries where the Rohingyas have uh, seek refuge. We are concerned, of course, over the violence which erupted recently. Many of the Rohingyas were attacked, their houses were burned, their people killed. In the process, of course, the Buddhists also were killed. We admit that. 
we are not about to pass judgment. What we want to do here is to find a solution. And the solution must certainly be that of the Myanmar government admitting the rights of these people, the Rohingyas, resident in their country or resident abroad, to become citizens, to be recognized as citizens of Myanmar. That is the only solution that can stop the kind of uh, clashes that we see happening recently. It is very unfortunate that uh, people should be killed, houses should be burned, and people should fight each other simply because of the refusal of the government of Myanmar to recognize its own citizens. And these people have every right, considering that they have been there for such a long time. Maybe they are of a different religion, and they may speak a different language even, but it is the same in Malaysia. In Malaysia, the Chinese and the Indians are not of the Muslim faith, which is the faith, the religion of the majority of the indigenous people in Malaysia. And they do speak their own language, even go to their own schools. But they are citizens of Malaysia and they have every right to participate in the government and governance of Malaysia. They can elect representatives coming from their own people or from other people in elections held regularly in this country. I believe that it is the intention of the Myanmar government to change from being an authoritarian state into a democratic state in which people would have the right to choose their own governments. But it would be a travesty of justice if a huge section or a considerable section of the population are denied this right. We seek, we seek to get the Rohingyas to be recognized as the citizens of Myanmar, to be able to set, stay in their, where they have been living, to go back to Myanmar, to be given all the rights accorded to the citizens of Myanmar. That is what we seek. And we are here to show what happens when people are denied their rights. There would be clashes, there would be oppression of the minority, there would be deprival of the rights of the minority, and this is not something that a state can be proud of. We know that Myanmar now wants to join the world community of nations. It is already a member of the group of states called ASEAN, the Association of Southeast Asian Nations. It is a full member of ASEAN. And in ASEAN, we don't have instances where people are not recognized as citizens. Some of these people are tribal people, others are people who came later to settle in, this, in these ASEAN countries, and they are accorded the rights of citizenship of the ASEAN countries. It would be very odd if Myanmar is the only country where people who have been living there for such a long time, uh, for, th for more than a thousand years, are denied citizenship. Maybe they want to impose some conditions for citizens. That is a right, but of course it's not always possible to force people to change their custom, their culture, their language in order to be assimilated. In Malaysia we don't stress assimilation, we stress in integration. And although I would admit that race relations in Malaysia is not perfect, we are still having 
some problems over racial issues, but for 55 years now, we have been at peace, living in, in a very peaceful country where it is possible for the country to make progress and to give its people a good life. We expect that the state of Myanmar, which is a very rich state, would be able to give its people a good life. And that good life should not be confined to only one segment of the population, but for everyone who claims to be the citizens of Myanmar. We are here to discuss this issue. We are not going to be very emotional about it, but we have to acknowledge that this violence has happened, and it has happened because of the denial of the rights of the Rohingyas. We expect to be able to come up with solutions, not just to blame people, but to find solutions to the problem faced by the Rohingyas in Myanmar. And the, sol the solution must be the right of the Rohingyas to go back and live in the state where they have been living all these years, to join their compatriots who are there, and for the whole population of Rohingyas to be recognized as the citizens of Myanmar. I know we have a panel here who have come on their own free will to discuss this issue, and I hope that they can help us provide with some solution to the problem faced by ro the Rohingyas. It is not just a legal issue of being citizens of Myanmar, it has now become a humanitarian issue, an issue of people who are being physically attacked and killed and have their houses burned and they themselves have been expelled from their country, living as refugees in other countries where their, the conditions of their life are really not humane are really not suitable for people who are entitled to a free a life, free of oppression like other people. So we have called this, this uh, conference in order to discuss the problems of the Rohingyas. And I would like to leave it to the panel members to give their views on the issues at hand and to come up with solutions to these issues where possible. And we hope that we can apply some, we can influence the government of Myanmar to do what is just and what is right. And what is just and right is to give to the Rohingyas their right to the citizenship of the country and their right to live in that part of Myanmar where they have been living for the past thousand years or so. So uh, I, with that, I will leave the floor and let the panel members make their presentations and we hope that there will be uh, dialogue with the audience in case uh, the members of present have some suggestions to make or some corrections to make so that we can discuss this issue in a very rational way, calmly, and with the objective of finding a solution to the plight of the Rohingya in Myanmar. And so I thank you and I declare this meeting open. Thank you.